Hi, welcome to Electrical Info YouTube channel. Subscribe our channel and share. Today we learn about close and charging motor control circuits for a power circuit breaker explained in detail. CB control schematics. This video deals with schematics of close and charging motor control circuits for a medium voltage circuit breaker. The proper functioning of MV switchgear depends on control circuits. For the switchgear to operate properly, the integrity of these control circuits is crucial. Hence records of commissioning and maintenance activities are crucial for troubleshooting procedures. In order to gain the skills of troubleshooting and following the sequence of operations, one must also be able to understand and interpret control circuits. Despite having numerous control circuits, all of them ultimately boil down to the CV close, trip coils. It's worth mentioning that switchgear designs must incorporate interlock systems in order to prevent unintentional closures that could compromise the security of both people and equipment. Protection relays for medium voltage circuit breakers are not built within the circuit breaker like those for low voltage breakers, nor are they powered by the primary circuit's current. The safety relays are offered externally. Because of this, medium voltage circuit breakers rely on control power to precisely and consistently trip or open the breaker in the case of a malfunction. Since the availability of control power is critical to the protective function of a medium voltage circuit breaker, the control power source is extremely reliable. Note, the most reliable source in a utility electric generation station is a DC source from a station battery system. Even on a loss of all AC power in the power plant, the battery voltage is maintained and the breakers are able to provide their circuit protective functions. While the protective relay in medium voltage applications requires control power, the typical medium voltage breaker is closed and opened via mechanical springs in the breaker and there is a manual close and trip button on the face of the breaker along with a flag indicating breaker status. The operating mechanism is a stored energy mechanism. The closing spring is charged either electrically or manually. It latches tight at the end of the charging process and serves as an energy store. The force is transmitted from the operating mechanism to the pole assemblies via operating levers. To close the breaker, the closing spring can be unlatched either mechanically by means of the local, on, push button or electrically by remote control. The closing spring charges the opening or contact pressure springs as the breaker closes. The now discharged closing spring will be charged again automatically by the mechanism motor or manually. Then the operating sequence open close open is stored in the springs. The charging state of the closing spring can be checked electrically by means of a position switch. Next we learn about. Figure 1 shows the manual close button, the manual trip button, the flag indicating breaker open or closed, the flag indicating charging spring charged or discharged and other elements of a circuit breaker. Where? 1. Closing spring. 2. Latch check switch, to rear of motor cutoff switch. 3. Motor cutoff switch. 4. Closing cam. 5. Spring release assembly. 6. Shunt trip assembly. 7. Closing spring. 8. Reset. Opening spring. 9. Manual charge socket. 10. Ratchet wheel. 11. Operations counter. 12. Charging motor. Figure 2 shows the typical close and charging motor control circuit for a power circuit breaker. Next we learn about. Charging motor. The function of the charging motor, M, is to compress the main closing spring which is the mechanical stored energy mechanism. The energy required to trip or open the circuit breaker is provided by the tripping spring while the energy required to close the circuit breaker is supplied by the closing spring. When the main closing spring has been fully charged and the stored energy mechanism is prepared for a closing operation, the motor cutoff switch, LS, creates an electrical break in the control circuit supplying the charging motor, M. The control circuit's logic is served by the anti-pump relay, Y, which prevents a continuous electrical close signal from causing the circuit breaker to repeatedly close after receiving a trip signal. Solenoids are used to power the breaker's electrical operation. Depending on which solenoid is triggered, the close and trip springs will either close or open the breaker. Next we learn about device designation and device description. 1. L. S. Spring charge limit switch shown with breaker closing springs discharged. 2. M. Breaker closing springs charging motor. 
3. 52. A breaker normally closed auxiliary contact. 4. 52. B breaker normally open auxiliary contact. 5. Y. Anti pump relay. 6. LCS. Latch check switch. 7. PR protective relay. 8. CS. C control switch close contact. 9. CS. T control switch open contact. 10. TC close coil. 11. CC trip coil. Next we learn about circuit breaker close circuit schematic. With the charging spring discharged, the spring charge limit switch, LS, is closed between the charging motor, M, and the secondary stab pin 9. This applies DC voltage to the charging motor and runs the charging motor until the closing springs become charged. The LS contact will become active as the closing springs charge. This allows the charging motor and secondary stab pin 9 to make contact, deactivating the spring charging motor, M. The closing spring will discharge as soon as the breaker is tripped and then reset, and the LS contact between the secondary stab pin 9 and the charging motor will automatically close, recharging the closing spring. With the breaker open, the contact 52B is closed. The 52B contact is an auxiliary contact that simply mirrors breaker status. When the breaker is open, the 52B contact is closed, and when the breaker is closed, the 52B contact is open. The normally open spring charged limit switch, LS, contact below the 52B contact is closed when the closing spring is charged. This is a normally open contact off the LS mechanism. In order to ensure that there is mechanical force available to close the breaker, this contact is only closed when the closing spring is charged. Downstream of the 52B contact is the latch check switch, LCS. The circuit breaker can be used for instantaneous reclosing thanks to the latch check switch. Before allowing the instantaneous reclosure, the switch makes sure that the mechanical mechanism has been reset and is prepared for a reclose following a breaker trip. Downstream of the latch check switch, LCS, is a normally closed contact from the anti-pump relay, Y. The anti-pump relay, Y, acts as a one-shot device. Looking at figure 2, you can see that the anti-pump relay is driven by the close signal on stab pin 11 and the position of the charging spring limit switch normally closed contact. Before the breaker is closed, the anti-pump relay is not yet energized as the charging spring limit switch is open. Once the breaker closes, the closing spring discharges. This closes the normally closed charging motor limit switch LS which energizes the anti-pump relay coil, Y. The Y relay seals itself in with the Y relay normally open contact, in parallel with the LS normally closed contact. The normally closed contact from the Y relay prevents the close coil from being re-energized until the anti-pump relay Y resets. What resets the Y relay is the removal of the close command from the control switch contact CS. C. The normally closed contact from the Y relay is closed because the anti-pump relay is no longer powered. Stable pin 11 receives voltage when the control switch close contact, CS, C, is closed. The close coil, CC, is energized at the 52, B contact, LS contact, LCS contact, and Y contact are all closed. The 52, B contact automatically opens when the breaker closes, cutting off power to the close coil. Next we learn about, circuit breaker tripped circuit schematic. Figure 3 shows the typical trip control circuit of a circuit breaker. The trip coil of the breaker is connected in series with auxiliary 52, a breaker contact so that it only energizes when the breaker is closed and needs to be opened or tripped. This prevents damaging of the trip coil should the trip signal remain on the breaker trip coil after the breaker opens and the trip coil no longer needs to be energized but the control switch or protective relay contact is still closed. Either the control switch trip contact, CS, T, closing or any closing protection relay contacts, PR, will energize the trip control coil. The green light is powered by the normally closed auxiliary breaker contact, 52, B. So whenever the breaker is opened, the 52, B contact closes and the green light becomes active, signaling that the breaker is open. Notice that the red light is not only fed from 252, a contacts in series but is also fed through the breaker trip coil between the 252, a contacts. If you approach this breaker and observe the red light on and the green light off, 
you will know it is closed. Have control power available to trip it, and continuity through the trip coil, which confirms the trip coil's integrity. One of two things is implied by this. Either the breaker is closed but the trip coil has failed and is open, or we have opened our fuse to the breaker's trip circuit. It is crucial to be alert to this condition and raise the alarm so that the problem can be fixed. A contact closure from the protective relay, PR, or the control switch trip contact, CS, T, will not open or trip the breaker if the breaker is closed. Said and the trip coil is open. 